Many visitors to Germany, not all, but many, might be tempted to buy a cuckoo clock. And that is something that I would very, very strongly advise against. More on that later, but first, how did cuckoo clocks even become a thing? Well, nobody really knows for sure. As far back as 1615, a French engineer called Salomon de Cau, at the time living in England, described a way of constructing a mechanical device to create the sound of a cuckoo. And then in 1629, an art collector wrote a description of a mechanical cuckoo clock owned by Prince Elector Augustus of Saxony. It didn't, however, look anything like the classic cuckoo clocks that you can find in souvenir shops today. That design can be traced very exactly to the year 1850 and a man called Friedrich Eisenlohr. He wasn't a clockmaker. He was an architect and had designed many signal boxes for the Baden State Railway. He entered a competition organised by the clockmaking school in Furtwangen to design a brand new modern style of cuckoo clock. The most modern thing in those days was the railway and so naturally he based his design on his signal boxes. Well, it was a runaway success and the basic design is now what we have in mind when we think of a cuckoo clock. But the original thoroughly modern design, modern for its time, was very soon compromised. This was the Black Forest region of Germany and tourists were buying these clocks as souvenirs and so clockmakers started adding more and more intricate carvings to them, usually with a woodland or a rural theme. In the second half of the 20th century, there was a sudden obsession with building massive cuckoo clocks. So much so that there are now four clocks, all claiming to be the biggest in the world. The first dates back to 1946 and is in Wiesbaden, which is nowhere near the Black Forest. It was little more than a facade added to a souvenir shop, but it's still there. Then in 1975, a bigger clock was built in the town of Wilmot, Ohio. It fell into disrepair, but it was recently restored and in 2012 it was moved to the town of Sugar Creek, which now boasts that it has the world's biggest cuckoo clock. It was moved to Sugar Creek because it claims to be the little Switzerland of Ohio. And the clock doesn't just go cuckoo, it plays Swiss polka music. The only trouble is, neither cuckoo clocks nor polka music are Swiss. Look, if you're going to boast about your heritage, then at least get it right. Cuckoo clocks are associated with the Black Forest, which is in Germany. Polka music originally comes from Bohemia, which is in Czechia, from where it spread to Austria and Bavaria. Sheesh. Back in Germany, a cuckoo clock the size of a small house was completed in 1980 in the town of Schornach and was listed in the 1984 Guinness Book of World Records. Just 14 years later, another monster clock was completed in the town of Triberg using the design of a real cuckoo clock but scaled up 60 times. This one now officially holds the record, while the one in Schornach describes itself as the first world's biggest cuckoo clock, which it really isn't. So, why would I advise against getting a cuckoo clock? Because it's more trouble than it's worth. First of all, and I speak from very, very bitter experience here, a functioning cuckoo clock will, sooner or later, drive you completely insane. <clears throat> but if you get an old-fashioned wind-up clock, it probably won't last long enough to drive you insane. The mechanism that operates the cuckoo and makes the sound is incredibly delicate, and it will, sooner or later, break. You can take it to be repaired if you like, but the unfortunate clockmaker you take it to will silently wish you dead. It's nearly impossible to repair, it'll never run the same again, and it's an awful lot of work to go to for a kitschy souvenir. And you do realise, don't you, that the reason they are sold as souvenirs is that Germans won't buy them. Remember, 
Friends don't let friends buy cuckoo clocks. be the little Switzerland of Iho. Ah, Iho, Iho, Iho. <clears throat> it was moved to Sugar Creek because it claims to be the little Switzerland of Ohio. 